We're trying to demystify the sometimes daunting world of electric vehicles, and the ABC of EV this week stops at the letter E for efficiency. Well, today we're taking a look at efficiency in your electric car. Now, we all know that electric cars are much more efficient than combustion counterparts in a typical petrol or diesel car. At best, a quarter of the energy used goes into actually propelling the car forward. That's an incredible loss of energy, and that's before you consider all the energy taken to drill for oil, ship it, refine it, and ship it around the world again, and transport on trucks and filling stations. So let's focus on electrification, and today we're having a look at what makes EVs so much more efficient and how to get the best efficiency out of your car. Stay tuned. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel, and if you're not yet subscribed, hit the button and bell below so you never miss a show. So let's have a look at why EVs are so much more efficient. As you know already, a combustion engine works by making thousands upon thousands of explosions of the petrol or diesel. Some of this energy is captured and moves the wheels. However, most of that energy is expressed as hot air out of the exhaust pipe with temperatures that run to the hundreds of degrees Celsius. On the other hand, an electric motor takes the energy stored in the battery and uses that to turn the wheels. Of course, there are some losses of energy, but it's around 10%, a huge difference in efficiency. Another big part of EV's efficiency is regenerative braking. Now, in a petrol or diesel car, when you want to slow down, you press the brake pedal. That engages friction brakes. And that, as well as releasing some really nasty particulate pollution into the air, all of the energy built up in accelerating the car is lost and there's more heat generated on the other hand in an EV. Most of the time, your braking events are done by regenerative braking, or recuperation as some call it. In essence, the electric motor that turns the wheels turns in reverse, and the motor takes back energy and puts it into the battery. This can make a huge difference, especially in stop-start traffic and hilly terrain. To give you a pretty cool illustration of this, there's a mining lorry in Switzerland that drives up a hill to a quarry using electric power. At the top, it collects up to 65 tonnes of rock and goes back down the hill. The regen braking on the way down, with all of that extra weight inside it, means the lorry arrives back at the bottom, actually with more energy than when it left. That's crazy. We could go on all day like this, but hey, you're busy and so am I. Let's talk about some ways to eke a bit more efficiency out of an EV. Before we talk techniques, let's quickly mention how we measure efficiency in EVs. In the old days, we all talked about miles per gallon, but our EVs don't use gallons of fuel, they use kilowatt hours. Most people are familiar with a kilowatt hour on their electricity bill at home, often called a unit in many places. So in EV terms, we talk about how many miles you get from a kilowatt hour of battery as a measure of efficiency. Different manufacturers will display the data in different ways, but essentially they're all saying the same thing. For example, your 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf may tell you that you are getting 14.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, meaning that for every 100 k's you drive, you use 14 and a half kilowatt hours of your battery. So let's move on to talking about some ways that you can get a bit of extra range out of that charge. There are the usual tips like making sure your tire pressure is at the manufacturer recommended levels. It's also important to make sure that you are not carrying extra weight around. Do you really need that boot full of stuff? Or maybe you can get rid of the roof rack for the six months of the year that you don't use it. You could shave a few miles an hour off your top speed when cruising on the motorway. Take a leisurely drive and go further. Does it really make a difference if your journey took 46 minutes or 43 minutes? Now, we're going to give you five more tips to get a few more extra miles out of your battery that maybe you hadn't thought of. 
number one. You can always tuck in behind a bus or truck on the motorway. Of course, you must stay at safe and legal distances, but just enough to take advantage of any bit of assistance. That reduced air resistance can make a really big difference. Number two, don't heat the whole cabin in winter. Apart from a small selection of new cars that come with what's called a heat pump, heating the cabin uses loads of energy from your battery. Instead, if you have it, use the heated steering wheel and heated seats. Or maybe wear some more clothes. Number three, look ahead when you're driving. This is something that more EV drivers could do to anticipate traffic lights that you can see the sequence are changing. Don't accelerate if you can see a red light coming up. Four, take advantage of regenerative braking. Now this will depend on your car, with some having stronger regen than others. Try to gradually slow the car as you approach a bend or a traffic light so that you avoid using the friction brakes. It's getting even easier now with new models like the ID4 having smart regen. Some new EVs use their GPS and their sensors around the car. The car can tell what the conditions are and automatically adjust the level of regen to suit the situation. And number five, think about your route. Are you in a rush? If not, take the more direct route along smaller roads, even if it's a few extra minutes. Let's talk about the efficiency of two manufacturers, Tesla and Hyundai. How could we have made a video on efficiency and not mention those two names? Although Tesla get many headlines, Hyundai's Kona and Ioniq drivers have long been touting their car's energy, efficiency, prowess. Even the Ioniq has even got itself the nickname The Wind Knife. Some Kona drivers are getting more than 500 kilometers from a single charge in summertime when just driving around town. Tesla are also working wonders with efficiency. The latest Model S long range has a drag coefficient of 0.208, which would make it the most aerodynamic production car in the world. So that's it from us on today's edition of the ABC of EV, E for efficiency. Now tell us what you think in the comments below. Please drop us a line because we love to read your comments. What sort of efficiency are you getting out of your EV? Do you have any other tips to add for getting that extra bit out of the battery? Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the video so we know to make more just like this. And we'll see you on the next one.